Hi there, welcome to another after school tech tip. My name is Bernice and today we're going to be talking about tips for prompt generation with artificial intelligence using Google Gemini. And if you're interested in more like this, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, check back for weekly videos, connect with your tips member, and our website's just down below there, tips.epsb.ca. So if you're here, you might be asking yourself, how do I start with AI? What can I do with an AI chatbot? And so when we look at generative AI, um, and we're gonna use Google Gemini here as an example, there's lots of different things you can do. So you can see types of prompting, um, here on the slide here, brainstorming, information seeking, organizing, summarizing, problem solving, content creation, practicing for scenarios, generating images, and more. So there's lots you can do here. And I also have here a list of examples that might help you, um, inspire you into figuring out, you know, what else can I do in terms of prompting in order to get it to do um, a specific request? So. An example that you might be interested in is brainstorming ideas for a newsletter. Um, maybe you want to ask it how to complete a task in Google Sheets. So maybe you have um, some numbers in a Google Sheet and you want to take a look and see, you know, is there a spreadsheet formula that I could use that might be able to do or sum everything that I have on this um, list? Something like that. So as long as you're clear and concise about what your request is, as well as what tool you're using and providing all that background context, you can ask it for some of that information. Additionally, um, you can also paste information into the AI tool and get it to organize into a table or organize it into headers and bullet points, get it to summarize, ask for pros and cons, create a rubric, ask the AI tool to take on a role and so much more. So these are just a few ideas again to inspire you feel free to experiment and check it out. And we are gonna talk about some prompting tips coming up here to make your prompting um, the best experience possible. So my very first tip when it comes to being effective with AI tools is to use natural language when prompting. And what I mean by that is just remember that prompting an AI chatbot such as Google Gemini is not the same as a Google search. So instead where in a Google search, you might type in something like grade three lesson plan, you might instead want to say the way that you would talk to a colleague where you're clear and concise in your instructions. So in other words, you might say something like, I am a grade three teacher, please provide a lesson plan on blank and really describe the context of what this lesson plan is um, going to um, match to and kind of what requirements you might have for the lesson plan. Maybe there's a specific format you want and including all of those different pieces. And so that brings me into my core principles of prompting. So as you can see here, we have core for context, output, reflect, and evaluate. So I talked about this earlier where in the very beginning, you can see for context to really talk about the necessary context. What is your role, right? Are you a grade four teacher? Um, are you a student service counselor, right? Whatever your role is that can help with providing context into the request. As well, who is your audience? So is the audience for parents? Is it for other teachers? Is it for school leadership? Is it for students? As well, when you have your output there, consider what your objective is. So what are you trying to create? What should it look like? Are there actions it should take on? Um, as well as what's the format, what's the tone that should come with um, the request. Third part then is reflect. So really reflect on the information you're providing. You might want to provide an example where the AI chatbot better understands the type of description, for example, that you're looking for. So you can actually say, here's an exemplar, copy and paste that in, and then ask it to use that exemplar to come up with its response. Now, what's important here though, is just to reflect on that information. So make sure you're not including confidential or personal information. And of course, always consider what information you're putting in, if there's a way to anonymize it, if there's a way to um, just not even put in that information, if it's not relevant. So just consider those pieces from a data security and privacy lens. And last but not least, evaluate. So when you put information in, you're gonna see an output 
that output there, really ask yourself, how accurate is this response? Check for hallucinations, meaning, you know, there might be some information in there that's actually incorrect. As well, check if there's any biases in there. And remember that it is a running conversation, so you can continue to respond to provide more instruction and cater that output further. And so this here is Google Gemini. You can see that there's a variety of different pieces in here. There's some suggestions that it provides as well. You can do a new chat by clicking on the plus hand bar here and you can see previous um, chats as well by clicking on the three lines up here on the left hand menu side. So I'm going to do a prompt here. And so the prompt I'm going to start off with is I'm a grade three teacher, create a list of success criteria for grade three students that begin with I can for students to check off and reflect on their understanding. Ask me three questions for me to answer before completing this list to help with this request. One of my favorite tips is to get it to ask you questions because sometimes that kind of helps with building out that context a little bit more. Um, and it also gets you to think about how you can prompt the AI effectively, and in this case, Gemini. So I can go ahead and press um, enter, and you can see here that they now have specific questions to help with the create success, success criteria. So it's specifically asking you things like, you know, are there specific skills? Is it a specific math concept? What is it that it's looking for? Um, and they've even provided specific examples to give you an idea. Now, maybe what you want to do is use this then and copy and paste in specific learning outcomes. So you can see it says, what are your overall learning goals? What are some common misconceptions or challenges? And maybe these are directly right from the program of studies. So I've copied and pasted this directly in um, from the program of studies. And I'm going to just say that these are the learning outcomes I want the students to reflect on. And so this now will provide you with this information and just like that some success criteria has been built. You'll notice it has questions and you can continue to prompting um, and so you can continue to adjust it so you might say something along the lines of um, please provide me with only five um, statements. And so again, you can continue to prompt it further and make it exactly what you want it to look like. So that's an example of what that might look like. Another example as well then is of course, um, really fully putting out your prompt. So what you'll notice with these prompts is that first of all, I'm now creating another chat and I'm not continuing in this same um, chat with Gemini. The reason for that is that if I continue here, it's going to continue to use the information I used previously to go on um, through with that. So what I want to do is if I'm starting a whole new topic, I want to click the new chat button and I'm going to put in a new piece and this time I'm going to talk about being a leadership teacher and working with grade nine students to organize a leadership conference for grade nine students across multiple schools. Notice that there is my context. I have my role in there. I have my audience in there. I've included some details for more relevant answers. As well, I've asked for a specific output. So I've asked for five suggestions of engaging and interactive activities that will foster collaboration, communication, and problem solving skills among these aspiring student leaders. I can even go further into this and ask for a specific tone if I want it. In this case, I'm not going to but I can also ask for a specific format, more than just five suggestions. So for example, I could even say, um, provide headers and categories um, that each have five suggestions of engaging in interactive activities. This way it's no, it's going to have headers um, and categories for each of those suggestions. I'm gonna go ahead and press um, enter and you'll notice here that it, because I asked for headers, it's now specifically saying, okay, so for fostering collaboration, these are things that I can do. For enhancing communication, these are pieces I can do. And for developing problem solving skills, these are pieces I can do. So you'll notice just by asking for a specific format, it's going to then respond a little bit differently. Um, and so that really then helps with really curating 
your response, the output, to be exactly what you're thinking of and envisioning and going from there. As well, um, on Google Gemini, there are quite a few pieces that you can use. Um, first of all, is you do have the ability to then modify these responses. So you can ask for it to be shorter or longer, simpler, more casual, and more professional. Another great piece of this is say you have all this information, you can share and export by clicking on this button here and clicking export to docs, which is going to then take just this response and bring it into docs. You can also turn it right into a draft in Gmail. Say you're making an email, for example, um, to teachers. Same thing, if you have that, you can start it out as a draft and then edit um, continuously. Um, as well, you're going to see this button that says Google it. And Google it actually helps with searching related topics. So you can go ahead and click on one of these and that's going to bring you right into Google search as well. And of course, if you click on the three dots, you can just copy that and then paste it over to wherever it is you need to. So you'll notice as I'm going through this, um, I might then begin evaluating this information. So I might, for example, then start thinking to myself, you know, how accurate is this response? Is this something that I want to um, continue to, to curate further by putting in additional instructions, right? Um, just checking for whether this is exactly what I am looking for or not looking for. So that brings me then back into just general tips for prompting. So whenever we go and take a look at prompting, you know, really considering, first of all, is this an appropriate task? You noticed earlier um, when I was doing the demo, the running conversation, right? So continuing to add information and asking for a different output back and forth. As well, you saw me using a new chat when I'm working on a different topic altogether. You also saw in that demo asking questions. If you're unsure of what information to provide, um, just asking the AI tool to provide questions to help with the task requests. And then two more tips I have here is to experiment with word choice. Um, certain words often mean something different. So if you use the word game versus activity, that may result in a very different response to you. Um, as well, reorder ideas in prompts based on priority. So anything that you place earlier is often given a larger priority. And so if you have a really, really long prompt, just really consider those pieces as well. And that's it. I hope that helps. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, check back for weekly videos, connect with your tips member, and again, our website is there down below. I hope that it helped. Thanks. Take care.